Hey guys, I just wanted to do a real quick video on showing how to get uh, our model set up to bake inside of Turtle um, for Autodesk Maya. And um, what I want to do is I was using this kind of sconce model, and I'm just going to kind of show you kind of with a, kind of a workflow on how to set this thing up for kind of more painless uh, um, mo uh, model baking and, and for, for normal maps and things like that. So this is this uh, step here. Will these steps here will work whether you're using uh, Turtle or whether you're using Mental Ray or what other baking solution? Um, these are just going to be some general tips for getting your model set up properly for um, doing baking. The next video, we'll uh, I'll go over exactly how to set it up um, to do some good stuff with. Uh, uh, it's actually Turtle specific. I just wanted to go over some uh, general kind of setup tips uh, real quick. So first thing I want to do here is I have my low poly model and my high poly model set up on the different layers. So we have a low and a high. So both of these, here's my low, I'm using overlapping EVs for um, these different parts here. So what I'm going to do is mirror these, the geometry once, uh, once it all gets baked um, to give me a little more texture space. And I've also still have my uh, my high poly model here with 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 more geometry. So what I've gone and done here is to set this up as basically as possible is to make sure that my low poly model is completely encompassing my high poly model. Um, the easiest way to really do this um, and double check everything is to make sure you have a separate material assigned to your low poly and your high poly. So in this case, I've got a Lambert high um, that's set. Um, to the high poly and so if I blacken that out real quick what I can then do is look at my low poly and see that it's completely encompassing it okay this way we can use it as a as a bake into envelope um, and help prevent some uh, some of the errors that we could get otherwise all right so the next step I wanted to make sure I do is um, go ahead and once everything is nice and set up the lows on top of the high um, I want to make sure that all my transforms are frozen. Um, as you can see here, I've already gone ahead and frozen my transforms. This one actually still needs to refreeze. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab these guys and go and say modify freeze transformations. All right, uh, it's giving me an error because I've already set some uh, animation keys. If this is what's happened, you can just go over here and say. Um, break connections if you'd already set animation keyframes. Um, the main thing is is to freeze your transforms because that allows us to keep everything centered, keep the pivots all centered and everything all lining up together. The next thing that I like to do um, is go ahead make sure that my, I have my low poly completely selected and we go to normals, soft and edge. Um, what this does is it's just going to make sure that everything in on the model is smoothed as far as uh, the normals are concerned because what that allows it to happen is when we bake a normal map off of this it's going to use the image data to have our um, normals not the uh, the normals built into the geometry um, this just helps to give a, a, an overall uh, smooth feel uh, which kind of uh, evens out the normals so that the uh, the normal map will be more effective if you don't do this and when you're importing into Unity or whatever package and it's going to try to auto smooth the normals or you have some hard edges and, and, and some things, it can lead to some bad compatibility errors. Um, so it's generally a best practice to make sure you smooth your normals. The, uh, the next step is to make sure you have everything selected. Uh, you do an edit, delete all by type history. Okay, what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of all the construction history that goes along with your uh, models. Um, this is great because what it does is it helps free up the cache. Um, if there's any deformers that are still in, that still in use, it, it cleans those out. It just makes for a much more streamlined process. Help prevent helps prevent errors. Um, makes for much smaller file sizes. Uh, it's just overall a really good thing because by this point in time, your UVs are all laid out, your normals are soft, and everything should be set up and ready to go for uh, the, the final model. All right. So last but not least. Um, this is something that I found to be very, very helpful as well, is make sure you rename your parts. So for example here, I have low sconce top, all right, and then I also have high sconce top, all right. This is going to be the low top peg, and then underneath it we have the high top peg. Um, renaming your models this way, when we get into the, uh, the bake editor, and when you're doing your source target mesh meshes for the, uh, for, the, for the actual bake, 
this goes a long way to being able to identify which parts are coinciding with which parts. Uh, I like using a low high um, name name kind of thing. Uh, you can kind of use whatever name you want to, but just make sure that you know what parts they are. It's really easily identifiable um, just to prevent uh, errors later on and to make sure that uh, and to make sure when you're looking at these things from a pick list, then you'll be able to quickly identify and, and assign which parts you need. All right, so the last thing I like to do before um, we actually get to rendering is uh, this is a little uh, this is just a little trick that I use in order to have be able to bake multiple meshes or multiple maps off of uh, the one scene file because once I get everything set up I don't want to have to change change settings for oh this is for an AO bake oh this is for a normal bake oh this is for a curvature oh this is for what, whatever else I'm trying to bake um, is to actually go in and set some animation keyframes so that I have my exploding model versus my collapse model all in the same scene. Okay, um, this is done very simply. All you have to do is, again, we have our, our transforms frozen. Um, set a set a keyframe for all their positions. Okay, uh, at frame one, and then say go to frame five and move it over. I like to move it over by just kind of like a, a different uh, a general integer. Uh, integer amount um, that way everything else can be matched up exactly with it just make sure your pivot points are the same uh, you can use vertex snapping you can do whatever you need to do in order to make these things line up just make sure that again your low and your high um, match up with each other to make sure the detail will be will be baked there um, this is what we'll need for our normal mapping okay and if we were going to do an, an expanded uh, ambient occlusion pass or something like that this could also be useful uh, for making an actual good ambient occlusion where we have all the parts and pieces relating to each other we're going to need something more like this so when you need all the objects interacting with each other when you're baking uh, keep leave them together when you want to pull them apart so that they're not going to be overlapping um, and have uh, inner cage penetration then what you want to make sure of is you uh, split them out so five and one is just a real quick way of, of, of making this happen all right so after, moving on after this we're going to go ahead and get our targets and our source meshes set up and uh, start baking <laughs>